So I've been in the process of rebuilding my studio from scratch. I just took everything out of it. I just put it all back in to make it more functional, to make it sound better for a whole bunch of reasons. There's still a lot of work to be done, but it's getting there, it's getting better. I'm gonna show you guys what I have in a second, but it's not a mess anymore. It's kind of coming together. The reason why I'm telling you this is because this whole process of like taking everything out and rebuilding it and deciding what to keep and what to sell and what to throw away got me really thinking about my gear spinning and I was like, what are the essential elements of a music studio, like a home producer beat maker music studio. So if you're just starting out and you don't really know where to start with your studio, this is gonna be the perfect video for you. If you're more like an intermediate, you probably have some of these things, but maybe not all of them. And if you're still like a professional or a more advanced producer, you might have mostly all of them, but I put a couple at the end that maybe you didn't think about and that can really help you improve your studio and just make your workflow better. Before we get into the list though, I need to do one thing and I need to do it right now because it's been bothering me the entire weekend. And it's this shelf right here. The shelf is fine, but on top of it, there's a whole bunch of like old drum stuff, sheet music, just stuff that I don't use. I haven't used it in like 10 years. So it's time to clean it up, fix it up a little bit, and then we'll get into the video. Let's go. The only thing that I enjoy about tidying up stuff is that I find good memories. This is like a book that they put together at the end of like drum school with all of our drum solos from that year. This is dope. The construction phase is complete. Now onto the rebuilding phase. I still don't know exactly what to put on there, but I'll find something. All right, I think I'm done. It's a little bit bare right now. Probably gonna put some plants or some lights or something, but for now, it's perfect. Now that we're done with that, we can get into our list. Since I made the list kind of like in order of importance, let me know at which point in the list you kind of stop. Like at which point you don't have the stuff that comes after. Let me know in the comments. All right, let's go. So the first thing that you're gonna need is obviously a computer. You can pick between a desktop or a laptop, Mac or Windows. I had this MacBook Pro late 2015. It's the last one with the USBs before we got rid of them. I love it, it's super fast. Really, it doesn't matter, it's personal choice. It depends on what you already have around, what you're used to. The only two things that I would really pay attention to and I would try to invest as much money as I can are the processor speed and the RAM. As long as you got these two covered, then you'll be good. The second thing is gonna be a DAW. There's a few options out there. Most people use either Ableton, FL Studio, or Logic. I use Ableton. And yeah, they're pretty much all the same, honestly. Once you learn how to use it, they all do pretty much the same stuff. So just pick whichever one you can afford, whichever one you like, whichever one has the UI that you like the best. Just pick one and learn it and you'll be good. So you got your computer, you got your DAW. Now the next thing that you need to be looking into, it's an audio interface. An audio interface is this mystery box. No one really knows what it does. <laughs> I'm just kidding. An audio interface very simply just acts as a box that connects your computer to everything that's outside your computer. So it's got some inputs in case you wanna input a microphone, an external instrument like a guitar or something like that, a synthesizer, whatever it is. And it's got some outputs where you can plug in your speakers or headphones, everything else. Basically it just connects your computer to everything that you have in your studio. The more money you spend on it, obviously the better sound quality you're gonna have, but I wouldn't necessarily invest like a ton of money in it right at first. I currently use this Focusrite Scarlett 18 i8. I love it. It's got a bunch of inputs, a bunch of outputs. It's amazing. Before that, I used to use a smaller Scarlett, same company, Focusrite, and it's the Scarlett Solo. Also really good and a lot cheaper. And Audio also makes some really good ones for cheap. There are a lot of brands out there that make some audio interfaces that are quality and they're not too expensive. In fact, I'm probably gonna put a list in the description with like my top three or five or something like that. So you guys can check it out and kind of get a direction. Since we're sitting here, I might as well tell you about number four, which is speakers. Just like these guys back here. These are Samsung, Samsung. Samsung Resolve A5s. They're super cheap monitors. I think I bought them used from a friend for like 80 bucks. Super cheap. They're absolutely not the best monitors out there at all, but they get the job done and I actually suggest not spending a lot at first. Even if you were to spend a ton of money on speakers at first, your room is probably not treated yet. Uh, your ears are not trained enough. So you're not really gonna like use that difference in quality, you know? Also my theory or kind of like my approach with gear, with everything, it's kind of like if you can make it sound good on cheap, crappy stuff, when you get a hold of the good stuff, then you'll be just like, Perfect. Kind of like where runners train with like weights on their ankles and when they take him off, it's just like, just like light speed. So yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Don't spend too much, get what you can get 
and learn how to use them properly. Number five is where we start getting into the non-mandatory stuff. It's still super important stuff to have, but it's not mandatory, especially at first, you don't need to have it. Specifically at number five, we're gonna get into MIDI controllers. We have two main categories. We have pad controllers and we have keyboard controllers. Pad controllers are just like this one. This is the Ableton Push 2 and it's my current favorite MIDI controller, but there's also the Launchpad, which is a little less pricey and it's also really good. There's a whole bunch of them. Then we have keyboard controllers, just like this one. Now, if you know how a keyboard works, those are gonna be a lot easier to start on because you already know the layout you don't have to like relearn where notes are and all that stuff and they're also usually cheaper like this is an Elise's Q49 I'm gonna link everything in the description and this is like I don't know 80 bucks maybe even less there are some really cheap ones and they're honestly fine as long as you know how a keyboard works then you'll be good if you don't really know where to start I definitely suggest the Akai MBK Mini Mark II you've probably seen this in a bunch of like Instagram videos my videos or anybody else's we all have it it's super cheap less than a hundred bucks you get keys you get pads you get knobs you get a little bit of everything and you can learn what you like and you can just kind of experiment with a lot of different stuff. This was my very first MIDI controller. I built like half of my producer career on this. This is amazing. It never breaks. You can throw it in a backpack. Amazing. Best investment I've ever made. This next one is definitely not a mandatory one. It's definitely optional, but really important nonetheless. This is probably my favorite one. There are just so many options. It's really fun and really like creative. Did you guess what it is? This one is software, plugins, VSTs, effects, sample packs, everything that you need to like get more sound. This is the most dangerous category of them all because it's so easy to just spend money on a bunch of plugins that you don't really know how to use or that you don't really need to use and you just spent a bunch of money. There are like endless plugins out there from all different price ranges from like free to like thousands of dollars. What should you start with? I'm not going to tell you exactly what to buy because I feel like that's not fair. It depends on preference and what you like but there are some plugins that everybody uses and they're kind of really important to get you started and get you in the right direction. Omnisphere is the first one that comes to mind. Shaperbox is another one, Halftime. These are all plugins just off the top of my head that I use every single day. I've already made a ton of videos in the past specifically about plugins, like the best free plugins, my favorite ones, the best instruments, all that kind of stuff. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna make a little list at the bottom in the description of my top five, let's say, and I'm gonna put links directly to them so you can just buy them through the link and you actually get a little bit of a discount. So yeah, have a lot of fun with plugins, but try to really just buy the ones that you really need. Otherwise, you're gonna sacrifice money for other like more important investments. And speaking of really important investments, number seven is one that you should make as soon as you have the money for it, and it's a microphone. This is the Rode NT1A, I believe. There's a lot of microphones out there, but they open a whole bunch of possibilities. When you say microphone, most people just think of vocals, and that's true, but you can also record like sounds, make your own percussions, just record everything that you have around you and just get really creative with it. Like for example, a lot of the percussions that you hear on my drum packs are made with that microphone. I record something around the studio or something in the garage, like a piece of metal or something, and then I process it in my DAW in Ableton, and I just come up with a good percussion that's kind of like unique and creative, you know? So yeah, a lot of people don't really think about that, but microphones are a really good investment with a lot of different uses. Do you already have a microphone or are you getting at that point in the list where you don't really have what I'm talking about? If that's the case, write in the comments where you stopped with the list. All right, let's go to number eight. Number eight is gonna be headphones. Let me put you down actually. <laughs> Once again, when it comes to headphones, you have a lot of options. Like right here, I have these Samsung SR850. These are really good and pretty cheap. And I have these more expensive Allo Audio. Uh, I don't know what the model number is, but these are dope. You're probably asking yourself, what do I need headphones for? I bought speakers, what am I doing with headphones? Headphones are good for a lot of different things. First of all, when you're recording audio with that microphone that we just talked about, you can isolate yourself and you can you know, have more control over the room. Second, you can use them as reference. Reference is really important when you're mixing. Sure, you can listen to your mixes on your speakers and you should, but the more things you have to kind of like reference your mix on uh, and kind of get a different perspective on it, the better it is. So if you have a pair of headphones, plug them in, listen to your mix on those, and if it sounds good on the speakers, it sounds good on your headphones, it sounds good in your car, then you're probably good to go. For number nine and 10, we really start getting into the bonus stuff, like the stuff that's really important, but that you shouldn't buy until you have some sort of like revenue or you're ready to like reinvest some money into your studio. Number nine specifically is external hard drives. I have a whole bunch of them. These are all like four terabytes each and they're all full of stuff. Why are they so important? They're really important because when you start having a studios with like a lot of projects going on at the same time, maybe some audio, maybe some videos, a lot of plugins which take up a lot of space on your hard drive, your hard drive space is gonna fill up really fast, especially if you have a laptop. When the internal drive starts getting a little bit full, the computer starts slowing down and everything just gets like clogged up. So what I like to do, and I'm not the only one, is transfer everything I have, plugins included, 
included onto my hard drives. I just plug them in into the computer and I basically have the computer like as empty as possible. So this way my actual computer hard drive is pretty much always empty and it runs really fast, really smooth, and I run everything else off of these guys. Let's get to the last item on the list, number 10. This guy right here is number 10. My best friend in the whole world. Yeah, at number 10, I put my USB hub. That's AC powered, so it just plugs into the wall and it's able to handle a lot of power. When you start piling up a bunch of MIDI controllers, the audio interface, a whole bunch of stuff, hard drives, you're gonna need a ton of USBs. And especially if you're running everything off of a laptop, but even from a desktop, you're not gonna have that many USBs at once. So I always have like two or three of those plugged into my desk. So I have 20 or something USBs always ready to go, always a few empty ones in case I have to go with like some flash drives or something like quick like that and it's really useful. And that was the last item for today's list, the first 10 things you need as a music producer. I would love to know at which point of the list you kind of fell off and you were like, dang, I need that. I gotta start saving up and get me one of those. Music equipment is expensive, so it's really, really important to kind of know what the next step is, what you really need to get in order to not waste your money. Because I've been rebuilding the studio, I've been making some sort of like different videos and I actually really enjoy making this kind of videos, but I think the next one is gonna be a beat making video because I just miss making a beat. It's been like a whole week since I made a beat. Camera or not, even by myself. I've been just building the studio and I just haven't had a chance to make a beat. So the next video is definitely gonna be a beat making video because I just, I need to make a beat. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to the subscribe button and the notification bell. I really appreciate all your support. Also, if you have a question that you wanna ask privately or you just wanna say hi, Instagram is the best place to do it. Just shoot me a DM and as soon as I can, I'll respond to you. All right, I guess this is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching the video all the way through. I'll see you next time and as always, be positive and positive things will happen.